Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. You guys have all been asking for a rundown on uh, Lando after seeing it on the channel for so many years, uh, running all the cool tracks we get to go out and do. Um, so we figured we'd finally give you guys what you want. So welcome to the uh, rundown on my Land Rover Discovery called Lando. Alright, so as you guys all know, this is uh, Lando, my 1994 uh, Land Rover Discovery. Believe it or not, it's actually a Honda Crossroad. Um, as much as I hate to admit it, it's not actually a Land Rover. It's uh, one of the uh, Hondas that they bought from Land Rover and rebadged. So, as you can see, I've done Land Rover proud and rebadged it back to a Land Rover, but uh, Rego papers do say Honda, so... For you guys who watch the videos regularly, that's what all the VTEC jokes are about. Anyway, um, this is it. I've had it for seven years now. Um, I bought it when I was 14 and uh, it was my first truck. I'll pop a photo in here of uh, how it was when I first got it. So as you can see, it was uh, pretty much bone stock. Um, it just had the flares and the snorkel. Other than that, it was pretty much bone stock. It's a crossover year, so it's got the 3.9 litre V8 in it. And um, so that's the big motor, but it's got the um, pre facelift body, so a lot less electrics to go wrong. So, definitely the model to have. So, when I first got it, um, obviously I had no driver's license. So, uh, first thing I did was rip the front bumper off, put an A frame on it, and it became my river truck. And I learnt to full drive in this thing, um, would tow it down the river, and I'd have a, have a, have a blat. And uh, yeah, it's been. Uh, it's been my river truck for probably two years. Then once I turned 16, I uh, put it back on the road. Um, it was a pretty basic club truck and uh, it's kind of just snowballed from there. So this is it today. It's um, certainly, it's been built on a budget. Um, obviously not got lots of money to spend and um, I've managed to get a lot, a lot of bang for buck by uh, using secondhand parts, things like that. So we'll walk you through the truck. There's a few, uh, few cool things on it. So I guess the first thing to start with right at the front, um, it's just a tiny wee bumper. It's probably the most tucked in bumper that uh, I've seen on a disco. Gives a really good approach angle. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, it certainly took a fair amount of time and uh, effort to figure out how to get everything tucked in. So if you come over here, um, you can see we've got the winch in there, got the light bar, big trans cooler and the A bar all tucked in, packaged in really nicely. There's about five mil clearance between, between it all. Um, so on that note, we'll talk about the winch. The winch is a uh, Runva Evo, uh, nine and a half thousand pound winch. Very, very quick winch for uh, the fact that it's a low line electric, uh, single motor, but um, still not quick enough, so there'll be some upgrades coming for that shortly. But um, it's a cheap winch as well, they're about pff, 900 bucks, so you really can't go wrong with them. Um, they certainly take a bit of fettling to get, uh, get reliable. 
Um, but yeah, I've, I've had a pretty good run with it lately. Um, so run the winch, we've not got the rope on it right now, but then we've got the spring to uh, run the uh, rope up to so I can see it from the cab uh, when I'm spooling the drum back on. The light bar's a 14 inch steady, I believe it's an ST4K. Um, I'll just pop, pop the cover off, or I'll try to pop the cover off. And uh, that thing right there puts out all the, uh, all the light I could possibly want. Um, probably probably going to add a few more lights to it just to try and get some more side vision. Um, but at night time this gives all the forwards, forwards light you could possibly wish for. Again, another great bang for buck item. Um, and I just have the cover on it because I don't like the look of light bars. Um, so that's that whole front. Um, just got the winch solenoid there. Um, also, we're running a much bigger trans cooler for all the like slow stuff we do on the coast where you're left foot braking. It's a Range Rover P38 uh, transmission cooler, um, which I have had AN lines welded on. Yeah. So the lines run back down to the original uh, Land Rover lines underneath the vehicle, but um, that means we can have a lot more fluid capacity and a lot more cooling. And uh, yeah, I've had no problems with the gearbox getting hot, um, even when we're crawling and left foot braking. So one of the best mods I've done for sure. Um, other than that, the whole front of the truck's pretty standard. Um, nothing really much to see. Underneath's where it starts to get interesting. So we've got a factory Land Rover axle. Um, it's a 24 spline axle. We're running chromoly axles and CVs from Raptor 4x4. Um, it's got a cam. Uh, e-locker in it. It's an old style locker which I'm actually looking to replace. Um, it's been very good to me and uh, for the, uh, the money I paid for it honestly cannot complain. Um, and it's got a bolt on bolt on pan as well. I've also put 4.1 ring and pinions in it as opposed to the 3.5s. They come from factory so that helps correct for the 33 inch tyres and it helps crawl as well. Um, probably one of my top three mods I've done to this truck very very handy and uh, got them second hand as well so nice and cheap too. We've also trussed the axle to keep it nice and strong we're using an XS 4x4 truss kit and uh, that has been really handy because there's been a few times the truck's got uh, got airborne unintentionally and it's kept that axle uh, reasonably straight. So front axle that's about it nothing too much more than from that and also running some aftermarket um, EBC brake pads on it we run green stuff pads So as for suspension, up in the front there we've got uh, two inch lift springs from King, they're the heavy duty ones. Probably a little bit hard for the way I run this truck, I try and keep this thing as light as possible so we'll be looking to change that in the future. But uh, we're just running some King heavy duty two inch lift springs and some 30 uh, mil spring spaces giving us about a three inch lift. Um, as for shocks, I don't even know what they are. They're absolutely flogged and need replacing uh, terribly. I believe they're two inch extended, uh, but yeah, they've definitely seen better days and uh, due for replacement, so we won't go into too much detail about that. Um, continuing on round, we've got the uh, flexi flares. Um, they're just the generic, generic flares that um, you trim your guard back a significant amount, which is how we can uh, fit the bigger tyres on. Speaking of tyres, we've got 33, 10 and a half, 15 um, Silverstones. These tyres are absolutely awesome, you can't tell right now, but they are starting to get a bit down on tread, so we're due for, a, due for an upgrade there. Um, they've been really, really good to me. A lot of people ask um, how, how they go, because most people only run Silverstones on comp trucks or trailer trucks. I obviously drive this truck everywhere, and uh, yeah, the Silverstones, other than wearing fast, they're really not that bad on road, and uh, off road, yeah, they're very hard to beat. They're mounted onto a set of 15 by 8.5, um, beadlock wheels I had made up there are sitting at about negative 35 offset and we also run tractor tubes so that's the wheel package definitely where I've spent a significant amount of money and uh, it really works um, definitely worth spending right in the uh, wheel and tire department as you can see we've also got the terra firma heavy duty uh, drive flanges um, there uh, just to help beef up that whole chromoly front end on the uh, on the disco so as for the snorkel, um, as I mentioned, that is one of the few mods that was on the truck when I first got it. It's an airflow snorkel, and as you can see by the many little scrapes and that, it has uh, seen better days. I've used it as a A-pillar scrub bar, as you can see. 
the poor old thing needs some loving. Um, but yeah, the snorkels never let me down. Um, I've wiped the top off it a couple times and always been able to just squeeze it back into shape. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a great starter, but we'll be changing to a stainless one shortly, um, just because this thing's starting to get beat up and I don't really want to crack it. Um, moving on, we've got the sliders. These sliders are made by uh, B-Spec Engineering. Um, they were one of the first mods I had done to the truck because uh, I uh, kissed the sills once and once was enough. Um, they're proper heavy duty. I don't know what um, what size pipe they are. I think they're probably 32 nominal bore pipe. Um, and they're just sill mount. So, excuse the noise. So they're just mounted onto the sill. Uh, they've got crushed crush tubes running through the sill and uh, yeah they've been very strong I've had the whole weight of the truck drop down onto them and uh, never bent them um, because Land Rovers have a narrower chassis than most Japanese full drives um, you kind of want to go to the uh, go to the body um, because otherwise you have too much leverage on the uh, rock sliders and there's no way of uh, yeah holding them holding them up so that's the rock sliders they've been great um, obviously flares on the back to match tires Side exit exhaust, everyone asks about the exhaust. It's a straight through system. Um, factory headers, two and a half inch, no, res no mufflers and just the one resonator, which is, uh, which is tucked just up under here. So that has a uh, very aggressive note, which uh, many of you guys seem to love. Um, obviously just the one uh, resonator in there, it's I believe 15 inch long resonator and then we've got the side exit, uh, it's all two and a half inch the whole way through. Um, pretty loud but actually not too bad in the cabin when you're cruising so I, I don't mind it but uh, again certainly something I'm looking to change in the near future. Um, as you guys know we off-road this thing proper hard and uh, being a wagon uh, it does seem to get a bit of bush rash and this is uh, definitely where the truck takes most of the beating. As you can see, we're down to raw aluminium and uh, panels are pushed in a little bit on this side. Other side's pretty bad as well. And uh, this is where I ran out of talent in the chasm. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's taken a beating, that's for sure. But uh, of all my trucks, this is the one I've owned the longest and somehow the uh, end caps have still managed to hang on all these years, despite multiple West Coast trips and uh, competitions. So that's uh, that's been a win. Um, anyway, we better talk about the back axle, um, obviously 4.1 gears to match the front. Um, we're, I'm actually running an auto locker in it from Kaiser. It's a very, very smooth auto locker, which I highly rate. And again, I got it um, new old stock, very, very cheap. It was like 350 bucks, cannot go wrong. Um, but that does put a lot of stress through the axle shafts. Um, after breaking probably three or four rear axle shafts and I think it was 18 months, I uh, decided to upgrade to uh, chromoly axle shafts from Raptor 4x4 um, and again terra firma drive flanges uh, to transfer that power. So that's the uh, back axle oh, and also um, sorry I should mention it's got a Gwyn Lewis heavy duty uh, pan on it um, and also got the um, truss kit from XS 4x4 to match the front. Um, so yeah that's, that's it all under there. So other than that, uh, the, back of, the back of the truck is pretty stock. Oh, I should probably touch on the suspension. Again, we've got heavy duty King Springs um, running factory length shocks. Uh, definitely not ideal, but I blew apart the two inch lifted ones and uh, just threw some factory ones in for one trip and haven't changed them out since. Um, they are pretty destroyed, so they're definitely also due for replacement. Um, but yeah, two inch King Springs heavy duty and we've got one inch spaces under it so again three inches of lift in the back the arms are all factory um, so is the top ball joint so it doesn't flex amazingly but the lockers make up for that um, factory fuel tank skid plate definitely needs uh, upgrading because I'm on borrowed time with that one but uh, it's still holding up so nothing fancy there as for tow points just a good old hook on the back can't really go wrong with it reasonably well tucked up and uh, yeah it's taken some uh, taken some abuse for sure also got the uh, 33 inch Silverstone spear and uh, this thing 
A lot of people ask what it is. It's a ground anchor, which you'll see on the uh, sea being used on our West Coast videos. Um, it's a Hunter Customs Mark II. Um, highly rate this uh, ground anchor. I believe it's one of the cheapest on the market and uh, very light and very strong. It's all made out of hard ox and uh, yeah, definitely put a, put some abuse on this thing and uh, it's held up. So uh, I'll leave a link in the description as to where you can uh, pick one of these up if you, uh, if you so choose to do so. So that's pretty much the whole outside of the truck. Um, obviously just lots of scrapes and dents. This side's pushed in even worse than the other side. And uh, yeah, poor old things uh, in need of some panel beating, but there's no point doing that until, uh, until I've got some, some more bar work. Um, so I guess we might as well have a look inside. So in the front, we, because of all the, water, all the mud and water we go in, obviously no carpets at all. Um, just very simple. I've cut all the sound deadening out as well, apart from around the transmission tunnel, just to keep some heat and noise out of it. And I've put uh, grip tape down on the floor, um, which was a temporary thing, but seems to be staying because it seems to work really well. It's a bit covered in mud right now, but that's uh, that's the story. So if you come on in and have a look, we've got uh, it's a Momo um, steering wheel, uh, one of their. Uh, jet boat steering wheels so it's all waterproof so it doesn't deteriorate as you uh, you know have muddy hands on it um, just all the all the usual sort of things your phone holder and all that we've also got um, two kill switches one so this kill switch kills the truck and this is the kill switch for the uh, winch so that's always uh, good to have and uh, it's necessary for any competitions I might choose to do in this um, so other than that it's all pretty pretty standard up in the front here in the back here nothing fancy other than we carry our um, bridging boards um, these are 10 times better than max tracks or anything because they're rigid so you can actually use them to bridge as well as spread the load um, highly highly recommend them they're just five glass boards um, also oh, there's you know all the usual like your first aid kit and everything um, often overlooked but definitely pays to have one of those uh, with you as well as uh, as well as your fire extinguisher so we'll come on into the back and have a look at the storage system I've got. I hate to say it, but it's not much of a storage system, but uh, it's done the trick this far. So let me just get the air compressor out of the way. So what we've got here is just a wee toolbox I've made up. We've got wet storage and dry storage. So wet ropes go on the open top side and then in here um, we've got the dunny roll, things like that. Um, toolbox, spare clothes. All the, all the things you want with you when you're going uh, remote touring or uh, remote wheeling. So it's just a wee box I made up at school and uh, it's, it's done me proud. Obviously spade and all that. And then all the recovery kits sit on here or in the bag. And uh, we also have, have a well used Matic which you just can't go wrong. You've got to carry one of these on the coast. Um, they certainly put in some uh, hard yards. Also carry spare fluids and spare water. So that's pretty much everything uh, on the truck. Um, I don't think I've missed anything. Um, we'll come and have a look under the, under the bonnet. So. I know I also carry, carry my tree trunk or, um, or equalizer here. Uh, great spot to carry it. It's probably the piece of recovery equipment that gets used the most. Because um, when we put the Range Rover P38 transmission cooler and we had to remove the secondary catch for the bonnet, we had to put in some hood pins. Uh, these are not ideal for an off-roader because uh, they get a bit jammed up with mud, but uh, they look good. So there's not much to see under here other than um, obviously the dual batteries. The motor's pretty much, well it is bone stock. Uh, we've done nothing to try and get any more power out of it. It seems to do all right, even though the old thing's a little bit tired. Um, we've done some waterproofing and we'll be doing a full video on how to waterproof your Rover V8 or petrol engine vehicle. Um, but basically consists of a couple of ice cream containers to keep the distributor dry. Um, also one over here to keep the, uh, keep the coil nice and dry under that air box there. Um, and then it just pays to keep your spark plugs in good condition and your plug wires in good condition and uh, good tight um, connection on them and that keeps them pretty pretty happy in the water 
Um, I've not found myself needing to do much more. This thing does cough and splutter a little bit now and then, but for the most part, it doesn't seem to mind a bit of water. Um, we've got a Phoenix radiator in it. Um, I had overheating problems, so I just went and put a new aluminium uh, Phoenix radiator in, made here in New Zealand, and uh, that's stopped all my overheating issues. To power the winch, um, you've got to have plenty of juice because it's a big motor on that winch. So I'm running dual Optima D34s, great wee battery, plenty of punch for the winch, um, and obviously got the dual battery set up for that as well. Not found myself running out of juice for the winch um, ever since we went to uh, the double battery setup. So that's pretty much it. So as you can see, it's uh, it's had a lot of work done. Um, definitely on a budget. Uh, we've kept uh, kept a lot of things stocked that already work and are only upgraded where need be. So um, it's definitely a budget build, but uh, it does me proud. Um, as you guys know, I drive it to everywhere it full drives. Um, it never sees a trailer, so it's uh, no trailer queen. So it's never failed to get me home, um, despite a, a few close calls. But uh, this thing seems to be reliable enough. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this walk around. Uh, if you have any more questions about the truck, feel free to uh, let, let us know in the comments and I'll uh, answer them best I can. Um, and yes, yeah, stay tuned because the reason we decided to uh, do this uh, video now is because we have a big bunch of changes coming for this truck. So hit subscribe to uh, stay tuned for all those changes and also plenty more videos of this thing in action. And uh, yeah, give us a like if you like the rig. And I think that pretty much covers it, so we'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.